The inversion rule is the process of having a goal, flipping it on its head, and trying to do the opposite. CGP Grey did this with a video called Maximizing Misery, where if I, as a person who wanted to be happy, would watch this video and think, I should do everything the opposite that it talks about. What's great about the inversion rule is that it allows you not just to know what you should avoid to do, but it helps you stop doing the things that are currently holding you back. Identifying actions that inhibit your goal is the biggest advantage of using this technique. In the gameplay today, we're going to be tackling the one gun per one kill challenge. Basically, in Fortnite, you get a gun, you can use it for one kill, and then you have to discard that gun and grab something different. Now, if I use a pistol to get a kill, I can't go back and use another pistol and just find a different one. I have to switch to different types along the way. This forces you to constantly be switching and looking for new items without making a maximum perfect build. My goal here is to be able to do it to either win or like get in the top 10 because I'm not really a Fortnite player. All right, the first thing we need to consider is that if we're only allowed to use one gun at a time, that means it would be really bad to be caught in a situation where I have all of the same gun. So that's a bad way to play. I should not collect tons of guns of the same type. They should be varied. So there are only a certain number of types of guns in the game, and I don't know the total max of them, but I'm going to use that as a limit on how many kills I could get. So if there are like five types of guns, I realize that that means only five kills that I can do. So it would be really bad for me to constantly go after every opponent and try to kill them because I would quickly run out of abilities to actually take out opponents with. And related to that bit, if I was going to be fighting a bunch of people and I had a shotgun, I was shooting at someone far away and I beat them, but now I have to get rid of it and suddenly I'm in all close quarters combat, that would be a very bad situation. So I should make sure to avoid being in a situation where I'm using the wrong gun for the environment because I might run out of the ability to fight in close range quarters because all I have left are long range weapons. Since I'm going to be really relying on switching guns, I'm going to have a lot of defensive play that I might need to do, so it would be really bad to not have any build materials. I need to make sure that I try to collect a lot of them and always be thinking about how I can use my building materials to protect myself. So using this information that we have on what not to do, let's try tackling it in the game and seeing how we actually play. So first thing I knew I immediately needed to get some items, but I also needed to go somewhere where there weren't people because if I was going to use the pickaxe, then I would lose the ability to use the pickaxe, and that's going to be a problem when I'm trying to just not get killed. There's a person who just shows up right then though, which is problematic. That's okay. It's important to get some mats, as you know, we're going to be in a situation where we have to build as our only real defensive thing, since we have to keep switching weapons. This will do. At this point, I was able to hear someone upstairs, and so I was like, all right, we got an SMG, let's test out our ability to just fight this person. And uh, even though I looked at the roof, I was wrong. So at this point, we picked up our second weapon, and so we were able to kill at least one more person. Didn't need a fishing rod, <laughs> so we continued on. Hearing shots, though, and so this is that part that we discussed of, like, avoiding various attacks and getting involved because I'm gonna lose my ability to do a kill with that gun. So this thing's useless. I didn't know how to use it. Not fun. So I made sure that most of the time if I heard some form of chest, I knew it was worth checking just to replace whatever it is that I held with something better or at least get some more mats and get some more ammo. i never seen one of these chests before. I thought that was pretty cool. Just this giant big thing with a minigun. We start hearing some shots, they're nearby, we spot a target, pull up the minigun. I lose it real quickly, <laughs> but that's fine. Get something different now. So I didn't realize that this wasn't a gun that you use to actually cause damage, and that becomes an issue. So I try it out, because we have our first little battle with someone building here. That does not really do damage. And I uh, realize that I can switch guns, but I'm like, this is just not working. I am uh, not very good at Fortnite. So I'm not really sure how to get through this, like, build that the person did. <laughs> there we go. Can't use that shotgun anymore. See another player getting involved in a fight. Switch to this Midas gun. It's a Tommy gun kind of thing.
You can see up in the background the person flying down. This is just a huge gaff. I, uh, I thought I would heal faster than this. But it uh, blew up in my face. So why would we do it this way though, focusing on the what not to do's rather than what we should do's? Honestly, the best way to do it is to combine the two into one. Really the idea is that you break down the ideas from additive solutions that add complexity to help the problem and subtractive solutions that remove complexity to help solve the problem. So for example, an additive solution in the case of this challenge would be like open as many chests as you can. Or we can bring back CGP Grey's idea with happiness and the idea of one of the things he mentions, which is the opposite, would be to go out and socialize with people. Now the idea of socializing with people or picking lots of chests open is a good idea and that is right. But have you ever noticed that you can both do the correct thing and the wrong thing at once and they kind of fight against each other? A good way to get killed in this challenge with the chests is if I open up so many that I pick up the wrong weapons out of it. I need to be smart about what I'm picking and not only pick the best guns, but pick the varied guns. If I'm having a bad time going out with people, then clearly going out and socialize isn't gonna make me happy. I need to make sure that I like the people that I'm with. And so you can say something like, don't go out with people you dislike, do go out with people. These are obvious, but sometimes the obvious things are the most difficult to see. What is right in front of your nose, so to speak. If you've ever blocked off a chunk of time to do homework, though you found yourself really struggling to get that homework done because you were having various distractions, you do know that you could increase the amount of time that you're working and that will help you get more studying and homework done, or you could remove the distractions and then get more studying and homework done. Both of those options help solve the problem of getting the studying done. One of them adds to the situation, the other one subtracts. Inversion helps us avoid mistakes. Avoiding mistakes helps us progress without complexity. And there you go, the inversion rule. Use it in order to look at things from a different perspective. Not just what you can add to make something better, but what you can take away to avoid problems.